This video explains the pre-equilibrium treatment uh, to obtain the rate law for amicalism and uh, mechanism. All right, so uh, this is what we have about the rates of uh, S and catalyzed reactions. Okay, uh, the rate has a dependence on the concentration of S that looks like this. Amicalism and mechanism put forward a mechanism like this to be able to try to capture that rate law. Okay, so we know that the rate for product formation then has to be equal to the rate constant of this step uh, multiplied by the concentration of the ES intermediate. And then the question is, well, how do we get that um, ES intermediate concentration? Uh, well, there's actually two ways to do this. And the first one is the original one proposed by Michaelis and Menton, and that is to assume that there is a pre-equilibrium situation. Right, so the idea would be something like this. Suppose that you can draw an energy diagram for that um, enzyme catalyzed reaction, where you put, where you plot the energy as a function of the reaction coordinate, which is a measure of the progress of the reaction. The way that this is going to look like is something like this. You have here enzyme plus substrate, okay, that uh, binds to generate the enzyme substrate complex, and then here you have your second reaction that generates products. Right, so the, the, in the pre-equilibrium treatment, what we're assuming is that the rate constant for this reaction, this is what we have uh, here, K sub B, okay, is much, much lower than the rate constant for the reverse process. Okay, which in this case, you will have Ka prime. Okay, so ES can either move forward or back, we'll go back to reagents, and it turns out that this is very slow, that one is very fast. If that's the case, then we're in a pre-equilibrium situation in which this, uh, this equilibrium uh, uh, is form before ES has any chance to do the products. Okay, this is something that we learned to do. Now, the way that we have uh, learned to do this is by writing the equilibrium constant of that uh, equilibrium process simply is this, E concentration of ES over concentration of E times concentration of S. And we've said that this is equal to the ratio of the forward over the reverse uh, rate constants. Okay? Now, it turns out that it's actually a little more convenient, in this case, to actually uh, invert this. Okay, so instead of looking for the equilibrium constant for the uh, formation of the ES intermediate, it's a little advantageous to look at this process from the perspective of the dissociation of the ES intermediate. This is actually uh, not a big problem. We are going to invert everything, and this just has a different uh, nomenclature. That is going to be K sub S, which will be the constant uh, for the dissociation of uh, the complex, okay, so the products of that are going to be concentration of E times concentration of S, and then your reagents will be ES, and of course the uh, ratio rate constants also inverts. You'll have here now K prime over K sub A. Okay, but other than that, this is uh, all identical to what we've done before. Now the key of this now is that, again, our goal is to find an expression for the concentration of ES uh, that does not depend on the, on the intermediate, Instead, it depends only on the concentration of substrate. Okay, so this is a nice way to do this because here you have the concentration of the intermediate that now you can put as a function of the concentration of substrate. Okay, and that would work very well. Now we have to realize before we do that though that uh, here you have a concentration of enzyme that may vary during the reaction as enzyme is is uh, being uh, transformed into you know from uh, free enzyme to the enzyme substrate complex. However, when you look at that, uh, at this rate law, it looks like there's uh, not a dependence on that concentration of enzyme, right? So the question is, how do we reconcile that? Right, so the way that we're going to uh, reconcile that is by uh, doing something that is called the mass balance of the enzyme, okay? All right, so let's see what that is. Uh, the mass balance of the enzyme is an expression that tells you, uh, that compares the concentrations of the enzyme at the start of the reaction and after the reaction has started. Okay? Uh, so the mass balance for the enzyme is going to be like this. At the start of the reaction, okay, we have whatever concentration of enzyme we've put in the pot or we have in biological media. This is something that is a constant value. Okay? And then after the reaction has started, there's only two places in which the enzyme can be tied up. You either actually have that there's free enzyme or that you have some enzyme as a uh, part of the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so then you have that this is equal to enzyme plus enzyme plus substrate. All right, so that is your mass balance uh, equation for the enzyme. And then what this is going to allow us to do is put the concentration of enzyme that we uh, have right here 
as a function of a constant, which is uh, the concentration of enzyme at the start of the reaction, and then the variable that we're solving for uh, in the expression. So this is going to facilitate uh, our work quite a bit. Okay, so if we rearrange this, we have that this will be equal to E at time zero minus the concentration of ES. Okay, that is your uh, concentration of enzyme. All right, so we come to this expression, and then we find that this is going to be equal to uh, the concentration of E at time zero minus the concentration of ES times the concentration of S over the concentration of ES. And this is equal to Ka prime over Ka. Okay, so that is the question that we have to solve right now. All right, which uh, is not difficult to do. And so the idea is that, again, uh, we would like to put this as, uh, uh, solve this equation for the concentration of ES, and we can actually even make our life a little easier simply by uh, putting here K sub S. Come. All right, so solving for K sub S, uh, for the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex, you can work through the, through the algebra, it's just a couple of steps. This actually turns out to be um, equal to E naught times the concentration of S over K sub S plus the concentration of S. And again, there's only a couple of steps that you need to take to go from here uh, or to solve this expression for the concentration of EAs. Right, brilliant. Uh, what we actually have right here is an expression for the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex that actually only depends on the concentration of substrate. Okay, notice that that is a constant, and this is simply uh, another constant, the concentration of enzyme at the start of the reaction. Okay, so we actually have now everything that we need to be able to uh, find out what the rate law for the overall process is. Again, the rate law for the overall process, which is the same thing as the rate law for product formation, is simply this rate constant multiplied by the concentration of, of enzyme such to the complex, which we just have solved for. Okay, so this is going to be equal to K sub B, and then the concentration of ES, okay, which is going to be equal to E times zero times the concentration of S over K sub S plus the concentration of substrate. Okay, all right, and then uh, we can erase all this and try to analyze a little bit this expression. All right, so um, notice that this K sub S is uh, Ka prime over K sub A, okay? Which are these, uh, the ratio of these two rate constants. All right, so let's, uh, we can actually again clearly see that uh, this expression actually captures what happens in reality. Okay, notice that that is a constant, this is a constant, so the product of these two constants will be our A, and then this is a constant as well, which will be our B. So again, notice that the pre this pre equilibrium treatment actually captures reasonably well uh, what you can measure in the, in the experiment. Okay? Uh, now, there's something special about this uh, constant K sub B multiplied by uh, E naught, and we can actually find out what that is by uh, assuming that the concentration of substrate is very high. Okay? If the concentration of substrate is very high, then we find that the rate okay, is going to be equal to K sub B concentration of E at time zero times concentration of S, okay? And in the denominator, we can neglect this K sub S constant uh, uh, versus the concentration of substrate because the concentration of substrate is so high. And this is true, well, we can cancel those two things out, and then we have that that's what remains. Okay, again, notice that here, we would be at in the case where the concentration of substrate is very high. Okay, so notice that this, the product of these two constants is the rate that you have when the concentration of substrate is very high, right? which is this rate right here that is a constant number. Okay, well, it turns out that that is the maximum rate that the einstein kawas reaction can ever have, and we simply call this Vmax. Okay, it's just the maximum rate, and again, that's what you attain when you increase the concentration of substrate to very high values. Okay, so then uh, we can actually uh, then uh, rework our uh, rate law that we have right here by noticing that this is simply equal to Vmax. Okay, so the resultant expression that we have is equal to uh, Vmax, concentration of S, 
over k sub s plus concentration of s. Okay? And this is the rate law derived by Michaelis and Menten using the pre-equilibrium treatment.